In this video, we're going to talk about why lidocaine is actually relevant in terms of action potential duration and how this relates to ischemic tissue. So we know that lidocaine has a benefit when a patient is exhibiting ventricular tachycardias or ventricular arrhythmias as a result of ischemic tissue. Typically, we're seeing some degree of acute coronary syndrome, whether that is acute or chronic, or the patient is having myocardial infarction or STEMI, which is leading to dramatic damage to tissues. And what's happening when we have that ischemic tissue is it is releasing intracellular contents. So we start to see the release of its intracellular contents, which is going to include potassium, and we will see an increase in resting membrane potential of the surrounding tissue. So one of the critical things we have to remember, what is relevant when we're looking at ischemic tissue, is that the resting membrane potential is higher. So in ischemic tissue, because we have release of intracellular contents, and that those intracellular contents are going to contain potassium, what we're going to see is a higher resting memory potential. So resting memory potential goes up and that is going to have an impact on the sodium channel. So we start to see an increase in resting memory potential. And what that means is as millivolts are higher, the sodium channels are preferentially going to be in the inactivated state. So an increase in resting memory potential promotes sodium channels to live in an inactivated state. And what that means is that those sodium channels have that IFM motif blocking the pore. So the pore is open, uh, but the pore is being blocked by the IFM motif. So we're promoting sodium channels to be in an inactivated state. So again, it's not that they are deactivated, so the pore is open, but the IFM motif is blocking. And that's what creates the structural changes which lidocaine likes. So lidocaine likes the IFM motif to be blocking the sodium channel, and it prefers the inactivated state because there is more access to hydrophobic uh, residues. So this is where we start to see a preference for lidocaine binding. So uh, we see a preference of lidocaine to bind here. And that preference of binding in this state means that it does not have a preference to bind when we move to the deactivated state. So uh, it has a preference for the inactivated state. It does not like the deactivated state, which means that it will rapidly dissociate. So pre we prefer the inactivated state, but we rapidly dissociate during the deactivated state. The other thing that we have to be mindful of when we're looking at ischemic tissue is that we tend to have more persistent flow of sodium during the plateau phase. So this is typically called uh, late sodium influx. So in ischemic tissue, the other consequence is that we typically will have uh, increase in late or prolonged influx of sodium during the plateau. So what that tends to happen here is we have our action potential fires. Because we have influx of sodium during the plateau phase, we can actually delay the plateau phase and our repolarization. So if this is our ischemic tissue. A couple consequences are that we see an increase in later prolonged influx of sodium into the cell. And if we draw our cell in here, this will have a couple of consequences or unintended consequences. So that means that we have more sodium entering than we typically do. So we have this kind of increase in prolonged or late influx of sodium, and we start to see an increase in sodium within the cell. The challenge with having more sodium in the cell is to Typically, we have an exchanger, which is going to push calcium out of the cell while pushing sodium into the cell. So we typically would see calcium leaving and sodium entering. And this is not going to function nearly as well if we have an increase in sodium within the cells. So what happens is we start to prevent the ability to have calcium efflux, and we start to see this buildup of calcium inside the cells. So this is going to further prolong our plateau phase. And the problem with that increase or accumulation of calcium within the cell is it promotes early after depolarization. So it can have an impact on our L-type calcium channels and can promote after depolarizations, which could create an increased potential for reentry. So again, one of the consequences we see here is an increased concentration of calcium inside the cell, and this is going to promote early after depolarization. Essentially, it's going to destabilize the membrane. It's going to make it uh, more unstable and more prone to these after depolarizations and potentially uh, ectopia or reentry. So what we want to do, or the goal of giving lidocaine, is that when we block the sodium channels in this ischemic tissue, the effect is twofold. We tend to reduce this late uh, entry of sodium into the cell, and we also are preventing activation of these channels in the inactivated state. So we're preventing early activation of our sodium channels. And it is having a suppressive effect in the ischemic tissue itself. So one of the benefits here is that we get um, suppression of in the ischemic tissues, and it does not typically have as much of a preference for our healthy tissues because they do not spend as much time inactivated. So we start to see suppression of our ischemic tissue. The other piece that we're going to see is 
we prevent the influx or that late influx of sodium. So this is no longer happening to the same degree. And if that is the case, if we're reducing that influx of sodium, we, we start to see is a reduction in time of the plateau phase. And we have to remember that if we have an inward current of sodium, that would actually be um, working counter to the efflux of potassium that we have during repolarization. So it helps shorten the plateau phase and actually increase our repolarization. So one of the other benefits here is that we get a shorter plateau and faster repolarization. And these things together are going to have a stabilizing impact on the membrane or any ischemic tissue and hopefully prevent ectopy. So again, we're going to bind in the inactivated state, which we're going to see ischemic tissue in more regularly. So that should suppress our ischemic tissue. If that ischemic tissue is firing, blocking that slow inward current of sodium during the plateau and phase three is going to shorten the plateau and is going to allow for faster repolarization. And those two things together are going to prevent early after depolarization. So what we start to see is a reduction in early after depolarization, which should help to prevent things like reentry and ectopy causing VF or VTAC for these patients.